Uh, okay, so this is my topic, and I know that you guys have seen and heard a lot about this already. And so I decided to uh, reteach you and uh, emphasize everything that's going on. Um, so, yeah, let's get started. So this is what I'll be talking about today. First, we'll hit what are they, and then talk about exportation, resistance itself, uh, the studies that are going on, uh, how we are using it and using it properly, and what we should do later on. So antibiotics in general are just molecules. Um, you know, I always had the idea that they were something really complicated and biological and all this other. Well, I mean, not that molecules aren't, but I mean, it's just here's these molecules that happen to be bacteriostatic or acidal, so stopping reproduction or killing, as a reminder. Um, the reason antibiotics are created, again, is for competition, kind of like in Bomberman. So <laughs> imagine each one of the little Bombermen are a different bacteria, and all the little bombs are antibacteria, I mean, sorry, antibiotics that the bacteria create so that they can kill off the other ones and live better. And uh, yeah, they're produced by bacteria, fungi, and man. These are the three man-made ones. I don't know what they do. Um, I just know that these are the man-made ones. The sulfur drugs, the quinolones, and I've tried to pronounce that last one so many times, but I don't know how. So that's the last one. Um, so here's the exportation thing. The problem with exportation, obviously, is that antibiotics kill bacteria, and bacteria make antibiotics. So I liken it to Mario or Zelda when <laughs> you're using bombs and you're carrying them, but you don't want them to blow up while you're still holding them. So solution one is to drop it off and run away. And uh, that's kind of what bacteria do. They, they don't finish the antibiotic before they send it out. And then it gets finished outside the cell. Um, so that's item one. Item two is like in Zelda when you go dungeon crawling inside a volcano. And you can't stay in there very long because it's really hot. And so you have to change into the red tunic, which is fire safe, which is kind of like changing the, ba the bacterial cell wall structure. Uh, so that the antibiotic doesn't recognize an attack anymore. Okay, so, still going. This I thought was a really cool quote. Selection for antibiotic resistance in bacteria provides one of the most well-documented examples of an evolutionary response to selection in natural populations. Because the population sizes are so huge and the generation time is so short. So, here is a, a demonstration of antibiotic resistance evolution. So there's the antibiotic and a susceptible bacterial strain. Obviously the strain dies. The next strain comes along, well these are all mutants of the same st strain, keep in mind. Uh, so the antibiotic works on all of them until you happen to have a mutant that's antibiotic resistant and the antibiotic is no longer functional. So and then the mutant just spreads through the whole thing and that one thrives and survives. Uh, the reason they use Final Fantasy is because, especially in Final Fantasy 3, there are a lot of different job classes. And depending on the job class that you have, it may be easier or more difficult to fight a certain enemy. Um, so imagine that these are all mutants of the same strain. And uh, the, uh, the ones that happen to survive will survive and grow. And all the other ones will die. And all of a sudden, you have a stronger bacteria. Um, I was pretty happy with this one. For those of you that have played The Legend of Zelda, you're familiar with the Triforce, which is kind of the big deal at the, uh, <laughs> the end of the game. You've got, the you got wisdom, power, and courage. And those are the three Triforce. And it happens to be the way that bacteria keep themselves safe um, from antibiotics. You've got wisdom which uh, they create the disguise. So they, they redo their cell wall structure and they make themselves not you know, visible to the antibacteria. Antibiotic. Um, then you got power, which is they just flat out go and kill the, back, the antibiotic. And then courage is they take the antibiotic and just shove it out of the cell, like on their own. So that's kind of the action taken, they're the hero. Okay. So you guys all know about plasmids already, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that specifically. But, uh, okay, there was a study that was done a little while ago. 
I used a Pokemon because that was the only bird I could think of. Uh, <laughs> these are from the, the study that was done. They, they took this strain of bacteria from the gut of birds, I think in Taiwan, and it, it happened to be causing uh, a cholera that was going on around there. And they were having a real big problem with it because they were using too many antibiotics all over the place. Um, what they did was they took the plasmids out of the bacteria and they sequenced them. And so they actually found, I think it was six resistance genes in just two plasmids. And uh, they were resistant to all kinds of stuff. But yeah, so that's one way that we're studying resistance at the moment. We can find out what's still usable, uh, how things are spreading, why things are spreading, and what they are spreading to. Um, again, so, well, okay. Antibiotics, we're using them wrong. Uh, they're really easy to get, too easy to get. Uh, through prescriptions, U.S. citizens use 12,500 tons every year of antibiotics. And in other countries, I mean, you can get them over the counter. People just pop them like aspirin. You know, if they feel sick, take some antibiotics. It'll make you feel better. And then when they feel better, they stop taking them. And that's not a good thing because uh, if you don't knock out the entire strain, then it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's why you want to take your whole series of antibiotics if your doctor ever uh, prescribes you a series of antibiotics. Um, the other problem with this <laughs> is that we use it for uh, domestic food animals. And instead of just giving them antibiotics to make them healthier, we give them antibiotics to help them grow. And in doing so, we give them a little bit of antibiotics for a really, really, really long time. And that is just causing lots of problems. And uh, so you've got these crazy strains of bacteria living inside these animals, especially chickens and cows. Uh, I got the whole list in these pages that I haven't been flipping through. <laughs> I intended to do that, whatever. Uh, you got like a million cows, several hundreds of thousands of chickens. In the end, there are eight billion domestic food animals at any given time, that, and most are getting antibiotics in small doses. Subtherapeutic use is basically what it is. And um, yeah, aside from detrimental effects of the environment that these things happen to be living in, we eat the animals and uh, you know come into contact with the animals on a semi-regular basis. So, um, moving on once more. These are Pokemon. And the deal with antibiotics right now is that we're running out. And the thing with Pokemon is <laughs> they keep adding more. They keep adding more and more Pokemon. So regardless of when you play the game, you have no idea whether you've got them all. And <laughs> nearing the end of the game, you're just fishing. You know, you just walk around, walk around. You run into, you know, a little battle thing. You're like, is it new? No, it's not new. So that's kind of what's going on with the antibiotics right now. Because, you know, we're just waiting and watching and fishing to see if anything new shows up. And it's not. And it rarely does, just like Pokemon. Um, <laughs> And that's one reason why we got to be really careful with what we're doing right now. The last one that was introduced uh, was one of the man-made ones, and that was the first one in like, I don't know, 10 years or so. Um, yeah, it's a little bit sketch. I liken it to playing Tetris. <laughs> and not the cool Tetris that you see here, but the annoying internet Tetris oh. that you play that never actually ends. Because when you play Tetris, it just gets harder. Like, the longer you play, the harder it gets. And the only way to win is to quit playing before you die. <laughs> and that's a lot like antibiotics. Because if you just keep going after bacteria with antibiotics, it just gets harder and harder and harder. And we won't win until we stop. So, or at least stop using it as much. And that's really what it is. Uh, to hope for another miracle antibiotic is a little bit naive, even though I'm sure a couple will show up you know, in the future or we'll find some new way to figure them out. Um, but really, the major solution is just to make sure that people know what's going on and uh, the relationship between antibiotics and bacteria. Um, yeah, that's basically what it is. So there are my sources. Yeah, so that's the presentation.